Hey there, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and my project today is for Elizabeth Craft Designs. I created this Colorado-esque canoe scene using the brand new Camping Out stamp set uh, from Krista Snyder. And I did quite a bit of masking on the mountains to get them to uh, be very uh, sort of different sizes and shapes because the stamp itself comes with only three mountains, but it can be done. And then here I am filling in my lake shore with a Copic liner and then adding a little bit of extra grass here and there to uh, like sort of fill in the little areas where this, the grass stamp itself didn't complete the shoreline. Um, but there is a lot of coloring on this video and it's kind of lengthy, so I didn't show the stamping, but I, um, if you're interested in masking techniques, um, I have some on my channel and I'm sure there are many, many other uh, videos on YouTube that would show you some great masking techniques to get things stamped like that. But anyway, I digress. So <laughs> I wanted my mountains to be purple because, you know, purple mountains. And I live in Colorado, as does Elizabeth Craft Designs. And <laughs> uh, so I wanted my mountains to be kind of a gray purple. They aren't like literally purple, obviously. Um, but there is sort of a very gray, sort of a brownie gray hue to them. So I blended LV2 and, and BG4 together to get that really nice uh, sort of brownie gray purple that worked well on the mountains. And then for my sky, I'm using TB1, which is a very light blue, and I'm using the chisel end of the uh, marker purposely uh, because I wanted to get that sort of streaky look to the sky. So even though I am kind of detailing around the edges of the mountains and filling in that way, I am also kind of doing the streaky horizontal move with the marker in order to get that sort of streaky effect that the skies in the west have. Now for my grass, I am using the lightest uh, shade of green, which is CG1, it's very light. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of shading with DG2, which is kind of an olivey green. And then the dark green is DG3. And so I'm using, I'm using all three of these on the grass and then some of the DG3 in on the mountains or the trees, sorry, the trees in the mountains. And then JG6 is a really dark green that I used on the trees in the mountains. And then I will come back with CG2 and add those to the trees. But later I'm gonna darken that down with DG4 so that all the trees are very dark. Now, and then I'm, I added some uh, dots in the grass with the DG3 marker because I wanted to kind of blend the CG1 and the DG3 together to get kind of a middle shade. Um, but those are so far apart in the value scale that I wound up having to take um, the sort of tip to tip method and take my CG2 or CG1 marker to the tip of the DG3 and then to create kind of a middle tone um, in between, as you see here, and fill in kind of that area and, and help blend together those dots with the lighter background. And I again was kind of doing that sort of horizontal streaky motion to get the look of sort of waving grains on the plains, if that makes sense. And here you can see I'm darkening down all the trees because when you think about it, trees in the distance are, are darker um, than they are like up close. And then I'm just filling in again with that tip to tip method and doing that again along the bottom shoreline as well to get that nice like sort of blended look. Now, if you were going to reproduce this card, you do not need to stamp the canoe in the lake at this point. What I would would have done had I realized what I was doing from the beginning <laughs> is I would have stamped the canoe on a separate piece of paper. Um, and I do wind up doing that later and then die cutting it out. So if you're going to reproduce this card, don't even bother to stamp the canoe in the lake. You can just color the lake in um, without the canoe. So to color the lake, I started out base coating with TB1, but I actually wind up covering almost all that over with the TB3, which is what you see here. And then this is TB5, which is very dark. And I obviously I'm not f covering up the sentiment. I'm purposely like kind of leaving a raggedy edge around that because I wanted it to be sort of, you know, organic and natural looking. And then I'm adding in a lot of shading with the dark TB5, and then I'm gonna to try to blend it here with the TB3, but it doesn't really blend very well. So um, I wound up doing sort of the tip to tip method again 
with, or actually this is the TB3. So I tried to blend it with the TB1 and then I took the TB3 and tried to blend it again. And now I'm doing the tip to tip <laughs> uh, method to get the sort of middle ground between the TB3 and the TB5, which uh, kind of smoothed it out. But I did want to have some of that streaky look going on. And then I'm going to add some BT7 to the lake eventually to give it a little bit of a blue green hue as well. Now my canoe here I'm coloring with IG2 so I color the entire almost the entire thing with this cool gray and then I'm going to add shading with IG4 and then a little bit of shading on the inside with IG6 and I'll blend that IG6 out with the IG4 and then blend all of the shading out again with the IG2. And, you know, it seemed like a pretty good idea at the time for the canoe to be gray, like an aluminum kind of canoe. But it winds up being kind of boring in the end. So at the very, very end, I'm going to color it red. So if you're going to reproduce this card, um, again, do your canoe on a separate sheet of paper and just color it red from the beginning. <laughs> but we'll get to that in a minute. Well, my dog, I wanted it to be kind of like a golden retriever, so I colored him EB2, and then I added shading with GB8, and then I did the paddles on the canoe the same way, and I added glaze pen to his nose. Now, the glaze pen got a little bit out of control, and I tried to scrape some of it off with my little tweezers, but it didn't work so well. So that was one of the reasons that I, I stamped the canoe separately later, um, and then die cut it out with the matching dies because the dog kind of turned into a disaster once I added the glaze pen to his nose. So I wanted to redo that. Plus, you could also see the line where I had stamped the canoe in the lake, and I really didn't want that. I wanted it to look like the canoe was floating on the lake. So that was why I did a new piece for the canoe. Now for my A2 size card base, I covered that in the cute plaid paper here from the Moda Scrap Color of Puppies boy set and then there's a perfect purple mat that is a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around glued uh, adhered on top of that now there's my separate canoe that i die cut out and then i popped up on foam tape so he's kind of covering up the original canoe and now i'm going to take some raffia and wrap it around this colored panel i have trimmed the panel down to three and three quarters by five inches and then that perfect purple panel <laughs> is uh four by five and a quarter and so i so i taped the raffia to the back and now i'm uh, now i'm tying a separate piece of raffia around the front in that lower left hand corner and i'm trying to rough up the ends to give it like a really organic look there on the with that knot and now one thing I always do with ribbon to help keep it in place is I sort of bunch up glue dots and with a scissors stick it under the ribbon so that it will stay where I put it. And so that's what I was doing there. And now I'm kind of roughing up that, that knot again. And now I will adhere the entire panel down to the front. Uh, and again, a little more, a few more glue dots behind the raffia. Now I was at this point thinking, it's okay, it's not too bad, it's pretty cute, but there's something missing. So I had added sparkle marker to the snow caps on the mountains, and that was nice, but I just felt like I needed something else, like the canoe just seemed flat to me. So I grabbed my glossy accents and I added glossy accents to the dog, and it was a little tricky because his tail is like super, super thin, and I did the paddles too, so I had to kind of clean up around the tail just a little bit um, with my tweezers because it's so skinny. And that helped, but then I added some clear droplets around the greeting because it seemed like that needed something too. So I'm adhering those down with some Ranger Multimedia Matte. And even after I added those elements, it just didn't seem right. So that's when I decided the canoe needs to be red. So I took my CR10 marker and I just colored over right over the gray um, and turned the canoe red. And in a way, this was kind of good because the gray, the shading on the gray sort of shows through the red, which was kind of nice. And because the paddles were already glossy accented, I could just uh, color right around those really easily. And now I'm adding shading with the CR8 marker. And then I will blend that back out with the CR10. And that really finished off 
the card. Like that was the perfect touch. It was exactly what was needed. The canoe was really kind of boring and flat when it was gray, but when I turned it red, it really became the focal point and really jazzed up the card. And so I just wanted to show you that cards are kind of a work in progress, like even for me, and I make changes as I go. So don't be afraid to just change the color of something, you know, especially if it's a light color and you want to make it darker, it's really easy to do. And that may make all the difference in your card. So that is the completed project. And although this is, the stamp set is not out today, the, uh, this is being posted August 4th, 2017. The stamp set will be available as of August 10th. So please check that out on the Elizabeth Craft Designs uh, site when it's there. And you can also find all the, uh, some other great projects on the Elizabeth Craft Designs blog and the link is in the video description as are the supplies linked as well. Please give me a thumbs up and I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Have a great day.